The nature of the rock is very fragile. The more we drill, the more it comes out. But we are still trying whatever techniques we have. The latest machine we have procured that has been airlifted from Delhi. We feel the pace of rescue work is very slow and we are not satisfied with their work as it is extremely slow. Almost 60 hours have passed since the incident occurred, but the way rescue work should have been done has not happened. The work has been sluggish. Time is passing constantly. The spirits of those who are stuck inside are breaking. But how to make this understand to the authorities? We're doing a lot of work at the moment to make sure what we do is safe and making sure that the people doing the evacuation are safe. November 12th, 5.30 a.m. local time. Just before sunrise, construction workers turned up for their shift inside the Silkiara Bend Barcourt Tunnel in the Uttarkashi district of the state of Uttarakhand. They had barely settled in when a section of the tunnel collapsed. At least 41 workers were trapped. The National Disaster Response Force, the State Disaster Response Force and the local police rushed to the rescue. Located on the Yamuno 3 end of the National Highway No. 134, the tunnel is part of the Chardham All-Weather Road project that connects four major Hindu pilgrimage sites in the Himalayas. It was planned to connect Yamunotri on the southern end to Dharasu on the northern end. The 4.5 kilometer long tunnel would shorten the route by about 20 kilometers. The roof collapsed around 200 meters from the entrance of the tunnel. 50 to 60 workers were on the overnight shift at the time. Those near the exit quickly got out on the national highway. 41 colleagues were not so lucky and they were trapped. Authorities did not say what caused the collapse, but the region is prone to landslides, earthquakes and floods. And not to mention the heavy construction in the Himalayan region. Geo Geostata perspective, it's a very young mountain and therefore it is considered as a young virgin mountain and therefore the rock formation is very young. And that's, that's a very common and very unique uh, proposition for the Indian mountains and that leads to these kind of incidences because the whole settle, uh, you know, uh, deformation and desettlement happens in this region. And that also are uh, one of the primary reasons for uh, you know, landslides and those kind of, uh, you know, natural calamities that we see very often in the Himalayan region. After the tunnel collapsed, two tunnel boring machines were deployed for the rescue mission. Initially, the plan was to cut through the rock wall and insert a pipe of around three feet through which the people could be evacuated. 
But after repeated rock falls, the authorities had to find a different way. In fact, on the 17th of November, drilling through the debris was stopped after cracking sounds were heard. We had to put the work on hold because there's vibration when the drilling machine runs. The balance of the surface gets uneven and there are chances that rubble could come down. We have decided to put the work on hold. We will resume the work later. But the big relief is that the place where the workers are trapped is a secure space almost two kilometers long with proper lighting. Proof of this was seen by people outside on the 21st of November. When the first visual contact was established with the trapped workers. Rescuers watched on a small monitor as the trapped workers appeared on the screen. Seen for the first time since the disaster, many were wearing their hard hats, as preparations continued to start vertical drilling to pull them out. Pipes that had been laid along the tunnel walls during construction are being used to supply food and medicines and maintain the airflow. This is how the food items are packed and delivered to workers through a six-inch pipe. The trapped workers have received vitamin C and medicines, including anti-depression tablets. I have given the trapped workers the suggestion to take vitamin C, calcium and drink ORS and keep themselves hydrated. I have asked them to take rest and practice yoga and meditation. Psychologically, there, there has to be a lot of distress. Now the symptoms could be in the form of anxiety, palpitation, uh, you know, um, serious uh, negative thinking uh, and extreme cases you can have, uh, you know, death wish also. The more connected we are with them, the more reassured uh, they are because that would give them the strength to get a feeling that uh, help is there and they can be taken out anytime. But for relatives of the trapped workers, it has been an agonizing wait outside. Many of them breathed a sigh of relief after talking to their loved ones through a pipe. I talked to my brother through the pipe inside the tunnel from which they are getting oxygen and food items. He said all of them are fine. They are just waiting for the machine which was supposed to come at night. The installation of that machine is going on. Let's see how much time it takes to start. I spoke to my father yesterday morning at around 8.30 a.m. and he said that he is safe and is upholding everyone's spirit. He asked me to tell everyone not to worry. It will take a day or two to come out. My father said the same thing today as well. It is this hope that has been the binding force in their toughest hour. But time is now running out. Indian authorities are exploring five new plans to rescue the workers after a week of failed attempts. One of them involves drilling from three sides to access the trapped workers. Five different agencies have been given the job of carrying out each operation. While Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, or ONGC, will look at drilling a deep vertical hole to see if trapped workers can be reached and rescued from the top, Satluj Jal Vidyut Nigam, or SJVNL, that is known for shallow drilling, will dig a hole to act as additional support to provide food and medicine inside the tunnel. The National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited, or NHIDCL, is in charge of coordination with all the central agencies in Silkiara. 
Tihiri Hydroelectric Development Corporation or THDC is starting the work of micro tunneling from Barcode for which heavy machinery has already been mobilized. Rail Vikas Nigam Limited or RVNL is working on another vertical pipeline to supply essential items after the Border Roads Organization built an approach road in just one day. A robotics team from the Defence Research Development Organisation (DRDO) has also been deployed. पहले 80 मीटर टनल बन चुकी है पूरी मतलब अंदर पूरी सीमेंट कंक्रीट भी हो चुकी है उसको फिनिश टनल है. An 80 मीटर टनल is already made. That means it's a finished tunnel with cement and concrete. There is no issue in this section of 80 meters. Yesterday a decision was made that all the five agencies should start working on the five options together. तो वो लोग बड़ा कोऑर्डिनेट अच्छे ढंग से कर रहे हैं. Despite the multi-pronged efforts, the challenges to bring out the workers are many and huge. Which is why rescue workers have had to contact the team that freed students from the Tham Luang cave in Thailand in 2018. International tunneling experts, including Arnold Dix, president of the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association, a non-governmental organization of about 78 member nations, have joined the rescue operation. Racing against time, Dix is hopeful to get the men out soon from what he calls the most difficult rocks and mountains on Earth, the Himalayas. We're going to get those men out. What I've seen, seriously, what I've seen, there are great, great works being done. This, this is going to happen, and look, we're on it, and that's what, why we're here. And there's a whole team of us here, and we're going to find the solution, and we're going to get them out. On the 23rd of June 2018, 12 boys of a football team aged between 11 and 16 and their 25-year-old assistant coach set out to explore the Tham Luang Nang Non, a cave system in northern Thailand after a practice session. As they entered the cave, heavy rainfall flooded the area, blocking their way out. The boys were stuck in the cave for 18 long days. <coughs> Till an international team of divers brought them out in three batches. A rescue team of 13 foreign divers and five members of Thailand's elite Navy SEAL unit guided the boys through the narrow passageways of the cave, some partially or fully submerged in water. The boys were held close to the divers and wore oxygen masks to enable normal breathing. It took the rescuers five hours one way to make the journey. In another incident in 2012, several tons of rock blocked the entrance to a mine shaft in Peru in South America. Nine workers were trapped inside for almost a week. The men were stuck about 656 feet below the ground since the informal copper and gold mine had partially collapsed. They communicated with the rescuers and received oxygen and liquids through a giant hose that was in place before the accident. Outside the tunnel, rescuers cut wooden beams to reinforce the tunnel walls. Workers used buckets to remove the debris obstructing the shaft by hand, then pushing it out of the mine in a small mining car. Bueno, de acuerdo a información de los trabajadores According to the information from the informal miners, the blockage is approximately 8 meters. What we don't know is the quantity of material in the area. We've tried to clean it up, but the walls continue to cave in. The miners had been working without authorization. 
Their mine had reportedly shut down commercial operations in the early 1980s. Informal mining is on the rise in Peru, where it is thought to generate as much as $2 billion a year. Peru is the world's second biggest exporter of copper and ranks sixth in gold exports. The mine collapse heightened concerns about mining safety in the country. In another South American country, Chile, a mine collapsed in 2010, trapping 33 miners 2,300 feet under the ground. On the 5th of August, the main ramp broke down in the San Jose mine, where miners were excavating deep inside a mountain for copper, gold and other minerals. Suddenly, there was a massive explosion and the passageways of the mine filled up with a gritty dust cloud. The miners ended up spending over two months below the Earth's surface. Rescuers, including experts from NASA and Chilean Navy submarine specialists, worked tirelessly to address both the physical and psychological challenges faced by the trapped miners. The rescue plan involved drilling holes to create passageways to reach the miners. On the 13th of October, all 33 Chilean miners trapped for 69 days were brought to the surface through an escape tunnel. With a burst of champagne and a patriotic anthem, the excruciating ordeal of the trapped miners finally came to an end, and they were reunited with their loved ones. This should serve as an example of how things should be different in the mining industry. Even in small mines, things should be done better. That's my one wish. The Chilean mine rescue was a testament to human determination, international collaboration and a feat of engineering. Horrific incidents like the present collapse of an under construction tunnel in India's Uttarkashi district continue to happen. In fact, the same part of the tunnel that caved in this year in Uttarkashi had collapsed in 2019. But back then, the scale of the collapse was smaller and no worker was trapped. The incident only led to a delay in the construction. In May 2022, an audit tunnel of T3 on the Jammu Srinagar National Highway near Kuni Nala in Ramban district caved in, killing 10 laborers who had just begun work for the day. The collapse triggered large scale operations that helped retrieve all the bodies from under the rubble within 48 hours of the tragedy. In February 2021, one of the deadliest accidents in the history of Uttarakhand took place. Over 100 people lost their lives after a flash flood trapped them inside a tunnel in the Tapawan Vishnugarh Hydro project. The rescue operation continued for months and bodies were being recovered from inside the head race tunnel till last year. So what's causing these recurring incidents of tunnel collapse in the region? Can such incidents be prevented? Part of the reason is the rampant construction, including several hydropower projects in Himalayan terrain. It has disturbed the fragile ecological balance of the highlands. 
the Uttarkashi tunnel collapse has also sparked discussion on unchecked development in the hills. Experts believe that for any construction in seismically sensitive regions like the Himalayas, it is necessary to address ecological concerns. Sustainable development demands approaches that are both geologically and ecologically sound. There are different technologies and engineering needs to be used in uh, Himalayan region or for that matter for every uh, specific tunnel purpose, you need different kind of uh, engineering and technology specific to the uh, needs and the challenges of that region. And I'm sure for this also, they must have used all necessary needs and challenges. Because I remember I have visited this site when the construction was on and they have used all necessary, uh, uh, you know, uh, engineering design has been done. But these kind of challenges, uh, it's like nature is, will always give you a lot of surprises. And particularly, as I said, there are no instruments which can help you uh, map the geostata for a very uh, deeper uh, region. Meanwhile, rescuers have drilled halfway through the debris to reach the 41 workers in Uttarkashi. They also successfully threaded a six-inch wide pipeline to deliver food to the stranded workers. Officials say they are confident of bringing the trapped workers to safety. As the world waits for the completion of a successful rescue, it would not be out of place to remember that while development projects are necessary to give people access to schools and healthcare and improve incomes in hill areas, they should also ensure that environmental planning is not neglected.